Hi, welcome to my channel, In Flight Music, and my name is Ian. Today, I'm going to show you how to balance your 808s and kicks. Time. Time. So one of the first ways that I ever learned how to balance my kick and 808 was from a guy named uh, Graham on YouTube. He actually learned this from someone else. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. If you search on YouTube, The Recording Revolution, that's the guy that showed me this trick. But one thing you'll notice that all of the different tricks that I show you, they're gonna come out with slightly different results. But overall, you'll notice that all of these different tips will show you a generalization on how your 808 and kick should match up. So it's more about just a general range versus a hard set rule or a specific number that we're looking for. The most important thing is that all of these tips will help you train your ear in terms of what you're really looking for in terms of leveling and balancing your kick and 808. All right, so this first trick is called the 3 dB rule. Basically what we're doing is taking a VU meter and this VU meter is made by PSP. And the first thing that you wanna do, it's free by the way, so you could download this. But the first thing that you wanna do is go into the settings, just click on the, the name here. And then you'll see that I have this set to negative 18 dBFS. And I'm not gonna get into the technical reasons for that or anything like that, so. But that's just what I have it set to. I recommend you doing the same. And what we're going to do, we're going to play our kick drum so that it hits right around negative three. And then we're going to add in the 808 to where the whole signal combined hits right around zero. And I would say after you do that, that's a good starting place for you to get to know where your 808s and kicks should be hitting with one another. And this applies to really your bass in general. So it doesn't have to be an 808. It could be your synth bass. It could be your acoustic bass, whatever. So now before we do that, I'm just going to play the 808 and the kick together just to let you know what we're messing with. We just have spins 808 and this is a rack kick, even though it's called KK6, especially with free sample packs, they'll rename all kinds of stuff, even though it's the same samples that you already have. So that's just something to keep in mind. And you can see that we're already clipping right here with our 808. So these are definitely not balanced or leveled. And by the way, you'll notice that I'm wearing headphones. So I actually am a headphone mixer, just like Andrew Sheps. Um, there's a few other guys that mix in headphones. And the reason being, I move around a lot. So my mixing environment changes all the time. So what I've done, I've gotten used to mixing in these exact headphones. And that's how I've gotten around the idea of having different mixing environments and not getting used to the sound or not getting used to the room or not having the right acoustic treatment for the room. And it takes a while. So I don't want you guys to think that it's a quick fix just by throwing on some headphones and getting into mixing. It's a totally different style of mixing. So, but it's just what I'm used to. All right, so we've, so now that you've heard what each of those sound like, I'm just gonna turn on this vintage meter and let's play the kick drum and we're just going to try and get this kick drum to hit negative three so i'm going to turn this all the way down and we're going to go from there now a way to fine tune this slider knob just hold control while you're uh, moving this with the mouse and you'll have you'll have a lot more control over where you're actually sliding this to So that looks pretty good to me. It's hitting right around negative three. You'll notice that some of these drum hits, the final drum hit is actually hitting higher. That's okay. You're just looking for the majority of the drum hits to hit right, right around negative three. That's one of the effects of a VU meter. It's not measuring the peak of the kick drum, which is what these meters do. That's why we're not using these meters. It's measuring the average level of the kick drum. So. 
Let's turn our 808 all the way down and we'll just increase the 808 level until this hits right at zero. I think I pretty much got it right on right there. All right, so now you'll notice that these levels are really, really low. That's all right. We have the balance that we're looking for. So now you can control shift click the kick and the 808 and you could bring this level all the way up. We're done with the vintage meter now. And there we go. So now we have that balance for the mix. So now that we have that leveled, I want to emphasize something really important. And this is something that I've went over before in my previous videos. Check your polarity. Make sure that the kick and the 808 are sharing uh, their phase relationship with one another. So it's actually hitting harder. You'll notice that this is not side chained. And if you don't know what side chaining is, it's all right. I'll explain it here in a second. But this whole process is something that you do before you sidechain. You actually want the 808 and the kick to hit on top of each other while you're doing this. So what we're going to do is reverse the polarity. And you'll hear already that it's hitting harder. And that's what we're looking for when we re reverse the polarity. If we reverse it and it's hitting softer, then obviously you want to reverse it back. It's also called flipping the phase. So yeah, overall, you'll hear that that's a pretty good balance between the two. And then from there, you can just use your ears to adjust whether or not you want the 808 maybe a little higher or a little lower. If you've liked this series so far, definitely let me know in the comments. And definitely subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a like, a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next few videos. Peace.